people this is Jeff once again bringing you video number three for J Gamer and today I was fortunate enough to get to attend the first month's age of Ultron organized play event at my lo local ven venue uh, we had a pretty good turnout we had about maybe 21 guys come and this event will be running from June to August and I thought you guys might like like to see exactly what I uh, pulled from the two boosters that I got um, not only that but you'll get to see exactly what some of the uh, or rather one of the <clears throat> prizes are um, that being uh, a particip a participation prize is actually this resource right here called the Avengers Round Table, which is uh, something that we will get into a little, little bit later. Um, these two boxes right here are just the boxes that my figures came out of. Um, I just thought you guys might enjoy seeing the box art, which is not too bad. It's actually pretty good. Now, this event is very similar to the War of Light event from 2014 um these sets right here are actually from wave one of age of voltron so i would imagine once this three month event is up that's probably when they will decide to bring out uh wave two which will have a whole bunch of other fi figures in it as well now uh, let's you know really quick go over some of the figures um like as you can see I got these two big guys right here um this piece here is uh, called Tess one uh, he is an uncommon with a 150 point cost now the odd thing about this dude is you see the size of him um, but he's not a giant size character at all um I don't know if you can see this very clearly I need to get a camera that has autofocus so um, in the next few months I will be investing in that so you guys can see but I think you can kinda get the gist of what's on there you see that's his first dial where he has like a lot of pink powers and one red um but yeah he has the basic damage symbol so him being this large I can't quite fig figure that that out at all um I also managed to get Victor Ma Mancha who if I can remember correctly from the comics he was one of the runaways and I think he was the one that was called the son of Voltron I think you guys can correct me if I'm wrong um I didn't really do too much with, with him, you know. Now, you guys are probably thinking, why do I have them split between this side and this side? Well, these are guys that I, excuse me, pulled from the boxes. And as you can see, there's only four figures um, on each side. The reason for that is when I pulled, I managed to get two of this one and I got two of this one so it really made no sense for me to throw those here uh, as well since they're just doubles now the reason why this side has these four specific characters because these were the four characters that I played in the event the event was a 400 point build cost these guys came out to uh, 399 points and they actually did pretty good I have to say with these four guys I played the best game of hero clicks I have ever played in my life um, they did very well uh, I guess the combination of me knowing how to use them and just sort of you know figuring it out getting some good dice rolls it all came in into on play but Anyway, let me fin finish with a quick review. Um, I told told you about test one, which we saw. 
Um, let me see if I can find his card here. Where are you, Tess One? Yeah, this is his card right here. Again, I don't know if you can be able to see this. This is Tess One. Uh, he has improved movement. It is called Unstoppable, which means he ignores blocking terrain during movement, and as he moves through it, he destroys it, which is pretty okay. Um, and he does have a trait, which reads... Total elimination of super soldiers. As long as an adjacent cat character on the map, I'm sorry, <laughs> is 100 or more points or named Captain America, Tesla can use willpower. When attacking such a character, Tesla's damage value is modified by plus one. All right, sorry I had to move that away from the camera, guys. Uh, I'm getting a little old, and my eyesight ain't quite what it was. Maybe, maybe I should get some reading glasses. Who knows? He also has a movement special. Let me take a quick peek. I'm going to have to take the card away from you guys real quick. It reads, Rebuild from Rubble. At the beginning of your turn, if Tess 1 occupies a square containing... A debris marker heal test one of one day damage. That's actually not too bad for a giant robot that's not even a giant, but you know, that's that. This piece right here, I said, was a victor. I'm going to try to run through this pretty quick because I know you guys are curious about what that resource is, so I won't go through it all with all of these guy guys, you know. But, um, here's a uh, Victor's card. Um, he has one special, which is a defense special. It says it's called a magnetic bubble. Let me see what this one says. Victor Mancha can use barrier, energy shield, deflection, and toughness. Friendly characters adjacent to Victor Mancha when he uses barrier can use sidestep this turn. That's actually not too bad of an ability. It helps. It helps. Um, and he has flight, so. That's not too bad. He cost a uh, hundred points. Test, I believe, was one fifty. And then we have this figure here. Now, this figure, I have no idea who this is. Her name is Alexis, and apparently, she's an Avenger. Do any of you guys know who this broad is? Because I don't. Um, and I have been reading comic books for quite a long time since I was about 12 years old and I'm in my late 30s now I have never in my life seen this chick but alas I guess she's an Avenger and uh here's her card it just says Alexis it says Avenger and robot and you know nothing special she has a basic card basic skills you know she only costs 65 points, so I guess she, she would make a good filler. All right. And this piece, I was actually pretty interested in. This is actually the female yellow jacket. It actually looks pretty damn good. I, I like the sculpt. It's not too small. You know, it's just small enough. Pretty good de detail there. These are some of the figures that that you'll grab there um we could take a quick peek at her card too right there she has the keyword avengers well, let me let you guys see it. again sorry about the quality guys this thing just does not auto focus but um she has the keyword avengers Fem femazons guardians of the galaxy Masters of Evil and Scientists, which, uh, I mean, you could pretty much throw her on any team. Uh, she has two traded abilities. The first one reads Criminal Past, Reluctant Avenger, and Future Guardian. Yellow ja Jacket can use Shape Change and is a wild ca card. That is not a bad trade at all. It's actually quite good. It's better than most, so... That's not too bad at all. 
which has another one that says stolen pin particle technology at the beginning of your turn you may choose the basic damage symbol or the tiny size da da damage symbol yellow jacket possesses the chosen symbol until you choose again so that's actually not too bad um i'm trying to figure out why you would uh choose the uh basic damage symbol over the tiny size because if you choose the ti tiny size one she can be carried and two she gains plus one defense for being a tiny size but i guess that's that's just something they they uh felt would help maybe you you guys can tell tell me why you know you would go from tiny size to regular size who the hell no knows then now that i think switch her from tiny size to the normal damage symbol she has flight so she can then carry someone else so okay i guess i guess i can see the point to 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 it then but again, uh, aside from the traits, she has b basic ability. She has, what is that? End cap, sidestep, precision strike. She has outward and perplex, which is good. Super sense. So, I mean, I think she's a, a pretty so solid piece at 85 points. That's not bad at all. All right. Now, we're done with these three. So, these guys can kind of just slide off here. Now we can focus on more on the team that got got me my 2-1 victory. Um, we'll actually look at this big guy right here. Now, this is Goliath. Now, he actually does have the giant size symbol, which you probably can't see, but I just feel compelled to show it in the camera's face anyway. Um, he actually played very good. Um, we could take a look at his card. Put that there. Put that there. I had this stuff set up all nice and neat. I have to keep things that way. <laughs> all right. This is his card. And, of course, he has keyword Avengers and Sciences. Now, he has the morph ab ability, which I have, have seen in, on other Hank Pym uh clicks figures and it reads many identities give goliath a move or close combat action that deals no pushing damage after action is resolved replace him with any character with this trait on the same click num number if this ca character started the game on its 100 or 50 point starting line this character well the character it is replaced with can't be healed past the starting line use goliath's blue click numbers for this trait so you're gonna see this a lot with the uh, hank pims and the goliaths the giant mans the wasps and so or one in actuality there is a special hank pym set which is sold separately from the age of ultron op set where you get this goliath you get a very large colossal sized uh giant man you get a hank pym i believe you get an ant man a yellow jacket and i think a couple of switch clicks i just took a quick peek at, at it i'm not sure but this guy is actually pretty badass and um that's the first trait his next trait is um enhanced growth potential give goliath a free action and until your next turn he has the colossal stamina symbol when he does and he makes i'm sorry when he does and he makes and when he makes a close combat attack i think wiz kids might have done a slight uh misprint on this card but anyway when he makes a close combat attack, he considers all squares within three squares and line of fire as adjacent. Now that's good because at any point, if you have two tokens and you want to, you know, you might be close to uh, 
t taking out your uh, your opponent, you can choose to make him colossal size and colossal stamina, which means you can push him past having two action tokens on him to make an additional attack or move or whatever the case is, which I have to say, while I was playing, that trait came in very handy it it allowed me to KO a couple of guys and he has a special movement ability called trample the states goliath can use charge when he does and moves in a direct line after actions resolve he may make an additional close combat attack targeting all opposing characters who squares he moved through but didn't already target with an attack this turn for this attack each hit char character is dealt three damage now that's not bad at all um and he has another he has a damage special ability called protect my teammates adjacent friendly characters can use energy shield deflection so this guy did very well for me. I mean, he he ba he basically was my uh, I guess tent pole, if you will. He solved up a bit, bit of damage, um, and he was the basic he heavy hitter. But aside from him, the other ones that really can counted a lot is Hank Pym, which is cr 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 crazy. He has two costs. He can be played at either 100 points or 50. And he is, for a 150 point character, he is actually very, very good. G good. Um, let me find his card. I'll just give, give, give you guys a quick glimpse at it. That's his card there. No focus. So sorry, <laughs> but uh, his of of course he has the traded uh, morph many identities, which is essentially the same thing that I read off of Goliaths. But he has another trait which which was actually perfect for this event, as it is an Age of Ultron set. So you're gonna come uh, come up against a lot of Ultrons. Uh, the second part of his trait is uh. Ultron's father. Friendly characters modify their attack value by plus one when making a. I'm sorry, when attacking a character with Ultron in their name, if not already modified by this effect. Opposing characters with Ultron in their name can't target Hank Pym unless all friendly characters characters on the map are named Hank Pym. So not only does he give everyone on on his team plus one just to take out Ultron, Ultron can't even attack him unless your entire team is composed of Hank Pym, which essentially just means that before Ultron can attack him, he would have to take 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 out everybody else. And Hank Hank Pym would have would have to be the only ca character left on the field. I mean, hey, that's not a bad trait at all. He has a damage special call, temp temporal fixes for the age of uh, Ultron. Hank Pym can use outwit and probability control, which is always good to have. It is always good to have those two together. Um. He was a real badass for my team at 50 points. His outwitting, and I mean, it was just amazing. The other, uh, the other one, our figure that did do a lot of work was actually this boy right here. This is classic Iron Man. And what made him so good is that, now mind you, this is classic, so he won't have much of anything. Uh, he has no flight, no range, but he does start off with 
charge, super strength, and vulnerability, and outwit. What really came into play with him was his ability to outwit. Now, Hank, on his 50-point dial, he starts off with outwit as well. So I actually had two guys that could outwit. So I would outwit whatever I needed, just outwitting everywhere. And they helped tremendously. And his charge and his strength, I would just go in there and just wreck shop. So he did pretty damn good. good. Um, and his card right here, boom, see that? He has a trait. The original Invincible uh, Iron Man. If the first ranged combat attack made during an opponent's turn doesn't target Iron Man, mo modify the attacker's attack and damage va values by minus one. So if your opponent, for their first attack, is going to make a ranged one, they have to target Iron Man or... Their attack and damage is reduced by one. It's simple, but it can be quite a problem, you know. Um, in the back here, he has a damage special magnetic turbo insulator. If Iron Man... I'm sorry. What in the world? If Iron Man has any action tokens, friendly characters within two squares can use energy shield deflection. I mean, that's pretty simple. It helps when being uh, attacked from a distance. It gives them e e ESD plus, plus two to your defense. I mean, you can't sneeze at, at that. Um, and, of course, I had the, this guy. This was the only reason why my team was not a theme team. But he actually did, didn't do too, too bad. Um, uh, it wasn't until... My third match that I got down to his clicks and I saw that he had prob. And it came out of the clear blue that I saw he had probability control and he helped. He did his job for a 119 point piece. Grim Reaper did do a pretty decent job. I mean, of course, uh, trying to roll for Blades Cold Laws is always a damn problem so um and uh his trait uh it just has to do with um with his brother wonder man uh deadly sibling rivalry give grim reaper a free a a action when he is within four squares of a character named wonder man and modify all of grim reaper's combat values Accept damage by plus one until your next turn. When when you do, deal Grim Reaper one unavoidable damage at the end of this turn. So he get, he gets a boost when he goes up against his brother si Simon, you know. But at, at the cost of taking one unavoidable damage. So um, I'm gonna end it here with this team. But this team did pretty good for me uh I, I i only had one loss and um it was because uh the guy that i was playing he played fairly well but he did manage to grab a chase figure um i'm not gonna ruin for for you what that chase was but it was a pretty powerful piece um i'm going to see if maybe i could get my hands on a brick of these and you know, maybe I'll do an unboxing for you guys and you you can see um more of the figures that are in the um set. But um you know these are are the ones that I pulled. Now I'm gonna push these guys to this side. Step away. I managed to get the wasp ID card, which isn't too bad, it looks pretty good. Her inspiration is Modify defense value by plus one, which is good. Not bad at all. It's a good card to add to the collection. You know, pl pl plus one defense can always come in handy. Put that to the side. Now, this right here, this is the participation prize that you get just for coming to play. You get Tony Stark Iron Man's. ID card and his inspiration is actually pretty damn good. 
um, the adjacent characters gain improved targeting, ignoring, hindering, and modify attack value by plus one when making a ranged combat attack. That is actually very good. That is, I think, one of the best uh, ID inspirations that I've seen. You know, um, and I ha have a few. If you guys have seen my previous video, you saw all of the cards that I grabbed, that I um, snagged, and this was pretty good. And then you have this piece here. This is. Let you guys take a look at that. These little chairs. This is the Avengers Round Table. Now, essentially what this allows you to do, I'm going to try not to talk you guys to death. It's like I always say that, and I still turn up making these ridiculously long vids. I'm going to try to run through this pretty quick. This allows you to use the ID cards, but not having to use them on the sidelines. Now there's an actual resource that allows you to use them. And um, I'll just try to read off um, a few of it so so you guys can kind of get the gist of it. So if you decide to go and participate, when you go, you'll, you'll know exactly what you'll be getting and what to expect. Um, but the uh, force construction... Avengers round table costs five points up to six distinct ID cards may be attached to this resource by paying their point costs ID cards may not be included on your force in other ways so essentially if you're going to use the resource you can't have the cards on your side lines at all it's either or if you're going to use the resource, this is where your ID cards will go. If you're going to use the sideline, then you can't use the resource, which makes sense to me, you know. All right, let, let me read uh, the setup. It goes, I, ID cards are attached to the resource starting with ID slot number one and filling each ID slot incrementally. Each ID slot within attached ID card during force construction is is called an active slot even if the ID card has been removed so I don't know if you guys can see in each slot there's these little grooves where the cards slide right in as you can see and you can you just keep filling the slots until they're all full for as many as you can. I believe it's a minimum of at least one card as the cost, the point value for the re, re resources from 10 to 35. So you get five for the resource and five for at least one card. And you can put up to six distinct cards, which is cool. Now you're probably like, well, what's, what's so special? about this as opposed to just doing it on the side lines well we're actually gonna get into that right now uh, the next part of this is clicking the dial let's see what this says here when you remove an ID card from this resource using the call and help ability you may roll a d6 and turn the resources dial clockwise that many times. When a friendly character takes damage from an opposing ca character's attack, after actions resolve, turn the resources dial once clockwise and then turn it a second time if the damage assigned to that character was three or more. This resources dial can't be clicked beyond click number 25. So you can still use all your call and crap the same. You just yank one off, remove it, your guy comes in, and so on. Now, if you decide to do that, you roll your die, and then you would click it. Let's see right here. Click it cl 
clockwise that many clicks now you can't see but on the on the dial there is a number it goes from not number one to three and there is al also a symbol here it appears to be a pack package with a parachute which if I'm not mistaken is a symbol that was on the Batman utility belt I'm not sure what that symbol is called but it does have a significance in this set too so there's that that was the uh, clicking the dial and here's the scoring each time an ID card is removed from the resource your opponent scores that ID card I'm sorry give me a minute all right the base cost of this resource is scored if an ID cards if an ID cards are attached I'm sorry if no ID cards are attached the resource and any attached ID cards are scored if all friendly characters have been KO'd so essentially you score this and all of the cards if you use them all up and it's empty your opponent scores it or he wipes out your whole team re re regardless of how many cards stay on, on it I mean that's pretty simplistic in and of its, itself so let's tur turn around and see what's up this thing has three traits I can help right now you may use any attached ID cards, call and help ability. Self-explanatory, don't have to go into any d details about, about, about that. The next one is, I'm better suited for these foes. Now it says, after revealing your force, but before placing characters in your starting area, you may replace a friendly character on your force with an ID ca ca character at equal or less points from your sideline. That cat character is no longer an ID character and its ID card is removed from this resource source. So your sideline I I ID guys can all, all, all also act as you know your bench or your reserve guys. You know you could swap them out but it seems to me you do that at the cost of losing an ID guy. So I don't really see the point in that, but you know what? As games progress, I guess we'll figure it out. And the n next one, which has to do with the pa parachute package symbol, call in the reservists. At the beginning of your turn, if a package parachute <laughs> number is revealed and that ID slot is active and empty, you may place an ID card that was removed because you used the call and help ability into that slot. If you do, turn the resources dial once clockwise. Now that's good because if you used one of your call ins and it's on the side lines, and on that symbol, a number of the slot that you use pop, pops up. You can recycle it and put it back and use it again. So the resource is actually much better than simply just using your sideline. Because this allows you to recycle these. Whereas if you just use the sideline, you used it once and that's it. You're done. No recycling. So this does have its, its advantages. We got to call that out. And then... Well, if you can see, it's numbered one, one to three. Uh, number one, if you see that, lending morale support. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose a friendly character and roll a d6 until your next turn. That ca ca that character can use the inspiration of the ID card in that ID slot. So that's cool. I mean, with a n number one, you don't even have to you know use the call in a specific guy can use the an inspiration that's in that slot so again these this is this seems to be a pretty good resource man number two is i can't get there but i can advise <laughs> which is crazy at the beginning of your turn 
you may choose an ID card attached to this re re resource that you didn't choose last turn. Until your next turn, friendly characters can use the inspiration of that ID card. So number two allows your whole team to use the inspiration of an ID card that you did not choose the last time, which is cool. I mean, that's even better. No, number one allow, allows you to give that to one guy, while number two allows you to give it to everybody, which is nice. And number three, I think, is probably my favorite one. It's called Avengers Assemble, which I think kind of gives it away. At the beginning of your turn, give any number of friendly characters power actions. For each one given, remove an ID card attached to this resource and place its ID character adjacent to that character given the action. This game, that character is no longer an ID character, can't ignore pushing da damage, and returns to your sideline when it takes damage. So, you ass essentially, if you have, let's say you're playing a 600 point game, and you have six guys, and you have four character ID cards, and you land on, on a three, Give four of you guys power actions, and you bring in the sidelines. You bring in your bench, and they play the game until they take damage. That's some stuff right there. That is re really nice. And it's cool that such a simplistic resource can do so much. So, I mean, that's that's just that's just nuts. Now, these, these two things are empty. Let me throw this to, to the side. And give you guys a look at this as you can see the star starter set comes with classic Iron Man uh, Wasp, Cap, Thor, Hulk and Ant-Man these are the classic Avengers and it comes with an exclusive ID card for I don't know if you guys can see that's Giant Man um, so and from what I'm told this specific giant man card, well, it says it right here, exclusive ID card included. You can only get this card from this fast forces set, so it's not bad at all. Let me see if I can crack this so open. I know I'm always saying to you guys, uh, I don't want to talk your ear off, but I think that time has come and gone. Um, you guys are probably, after two videos of me jibber jabbering you guys to death you probably care less that i talk you guys to death hell some of you might even enjoy it i don't know a lot of us are sadists that that way all right so got it open let's pop it open we don't we need to take the figures out do we do we all right maybe we do but here let me Take this out. Put that here for right now. It's nice little artwork there. I don't think this comes with a map because it's too thin. But no, I just wanted to really take a look at the cards. See exactly what these guys can do. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, let's see here. What do we have? What do we have? Who do we have? All right, obviously we got Ant-Man here. Avengers, he has a trait. Avengers Founder, which I think they all have. When adjacent to other friendly characters with this trait, Ant-Man can use Empower. All right, that's not bad. I'm going to run through this pretty quick. I don't want to ruin everything. And you have a Hulk. I think this Hulk is not even a giant size character. So I guess they wanted to keep to the classic. And he's a... His movement symbol there, he's a transporter, which means he has the move and attack ability. And if you can see, he has a movement special. I'll read that off. It says, Unstoppable Fury. Hulk can use flurry, sidestep, and improved movement. Ignores hindering, breaks through blocking, and ignores characters. So that's not bad at all. 
uh, and he, he also has an Avengers Bounder trait. When adjacent to other friendly characters with this trait, Hulk can use Empower. I'm actually going to look through this and see if they all have this. Uh, okay, so from what I can see, Ant-Man, Hulk, and Wasp can use Empower. Uh, Iron Man, Cap, and Thor use Enhancement, which uh, I guess they figure these guys be being the close quarter fighters and these guys can be more so the range guys can use enhancement and power enhancement that's pretty decent and i mean they all seem pretty basic cap has a special attack shield ricochet give captain america a ranged combat action and his damage value is locked at his printed value until action is resolved after the ranged combat attack resolves, he may make a second ranged combat attack as a free a a a action. Pretty sim simple. Sounds good. He's at a hundred. He can be played at hundred and fifty points. Well, at a hundred points and at fifty points, he has a damage tr uh, special. Avengers assemble. Seeing, seeing that a lot. Give Captain America a power action and choose another friendly character that shares a keyword with him and doesn't have two action tokens. That character is Im immediately given a move action as a free action and their speed value halved for this a action. Which is cool because if you have someone who might have, let's say, a Blades Claws or Flurry or something like, like that, but they can't get in close. Cap will give them that free movement, like a sort of a free charge, allowing them to charge in and do some damage, man. So that's actually not bad at all. So we'll put these to the side. Uh, pop these out. I'm sure you guys might want to see. You're figuring, man, if you're going to talk us to death this much, don't stop now. Finish it up, bruh. And I will. I will oblige you guys. Hank Pym, well, it's Giant Man, or it just says Hank Pym, but the photo is Giant Man. Hank Pym, let's see what his inspiration is. Inspiration, modify range value by plus three when using Outwit or Perplex. Mo modify defense value by plus three. When attacked by an opposing character with robot keyword. Alright, so he does give you a nice boost in range when you're using your outwit and perplex. And your defense gets mo modified the max, which is three, if you're attacked by someone who's a robot. Again, this is really good for this particular set because you're going to be going up. Up against a lot of robots, you're going to be going up against Jocasta and Ultron and this guy, that guy, the third guy. You're going to be going up against a lot of robots. So that's actually a pretty good card to have in a set. And these are the fi figures, man. Um, I won't really pull them out. I mean, you guys can see them. They look pre pretty neat. I was just com compelled to get it. You know, I'm. I'm an avid collector, so and and um that's pretty much it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I know it was supposed supposed to be a quick review, but this is video number three, and I think we've all gotten to the point where we know I don't do quick reviews, even the quick ones are long. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I will leave a link to my two pre previous vids if you wish to check them out and i'm going to see if i can maybe bring you guys some um some videos of the events i will be discussing that with the judge of the van venue that i go to um and if it's a go i will uh let you guys know the venue exactly and i can bring you some bat reps and you know and we can we can get get things going man all right um again um at some point i may or may not see if i could get a hold of a brick and 
uh, doing an unboxing unbox for you guys so you can see some of some of the uh, pretty wild pieces for yourselves that are in this set it's pretty good if you're considering plan I, I, I would say go on ahead and have fun with it alright alright man keep gaming